Hi guys, my name is Vivek and in this video series, we are going to talk about indexing in Oracle. Guys, as I've done in my previous videos, I will try to keep it as simple as possible. At the same time, I will try to explain it with as many real project examples as possible. I have another quick request. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, please go ahead and do it now so that you get a notification as soon as I upload a new video. Now let's go ahead and discuss the contents of this series. And I'm going to add a lot of stuff apart from this content as well. So we are going to talk about what are indexes, how they help. We are going to talk about when and why we should use them. Then you can categorize indexed uh, based on certain criteria. We have usable and non-usable index. We have visible and non-visible index. Then there is this basic criteria which everyone is aware of. Mostly people who have worked on index. Now we have B3 index which is the default index so if you don't specify any keyword while creating index it's going to go ahead and create a B3 index then we have bitmap and bitmap join index we have functional index domain index partition index then we have simple and composite index based on the number of columns that you are using to create index you can classify them in simple and composite index then we have unique and non-unique index then we have certain scanning methods that are being used by index which are called the index scan method and we will discuss about all that in detail then b3 index can be further categorized in terms of these index the descending index key compression index reverse key index indexed organized table which is slightly different concept but we will understand that as well clustered and non-clustered index and then we have bitmap index, functional index, domain index and partition index. So apart from this as well, we are going to discuss a lot of things in detail. And guys, I understand that at this point of time, all these topics may sound a little overwhelming, but don't worry about it. Once we are done with this video series, I assure you that you will be very comfortable with indexes. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and understand what are indexes. So indexes are database objects which can be created on table or table clusters. What are table clusters? We will discuss that later, but right now for our reference, we will use table. And if these index are applied correctly, they can speed up data retrieval in certain cases. So indexes are not magic bands that you will create and it will improve the performance of your entire database. Only if applied correctly, they can improve your select queries and that too only in specific cases. What are they? We will understand them now but from this definition we need to pick three things indexes are database objects which actually resides on memory so it's not just a concept they actually reside on memory and we can create them on table right now we are using table as reference and only in certain cases when applied correctly they will improve our select performance so let's go ahead and understand this with a layman example I work for a law firm and we have a lot of clients. Now we are storing all the files of these clients in a storage warehouse. This is my storage warehouse. Now this box has a lot of shelves and each shelf has certain amount of files. So this particular shelf has two files and so on. Now I need to find the file pertaining to ABC technologies, but the challenge is I don't know where that particular file is. So the only option I have is to go through all the blocks, let's see that the file is in this particular block. This is the file. The only option I have is to go through all these blocks and eventually identify that. All right, my file is in this particular location. Now the challenge with this approach is if I have way too many clients, identifying the particular file will be a very difficult process. Now what exactly is an alternate solution to this? If I maintain another file where I alphabetically store that which particular client file is being stored at which location, it will be very easy for me to retrieve a particular file. In our case, what I can do is I can see that ABC starts with alphabet A. So I just have to open my alphabet A of the file and identify that all right, ABC file belongs to the last and the rightmost block. So it's very easy. I just have to go through that file. And once I have the information, I go to this particular block and retrieve the information. So if I talk in terms of Oracle, this particular data is my table where I have to create the index. 
and the secondary file that I created from where I am getting that information that where the data is actually residing on my table that file is acting as my index. Now let's go ahead and understand this approach in a little more detail using SQL developer where I was accessing the entire data we call that table access full and where I was using my key to get the file that is called table access by index row id and we will understand this in a moment in SQL developer what exactly this means by using this particular query select all from sales where id is equals to 1. So let's switch to SQL developer and see how it works. So here I am creating a sales table that has 5 columns id, the order id of that particular sale, the product that was sold the amount that was generated as a part of that sale and the date on which the sale happened. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a million rows in this particular table. So I went ahead and I inserted a million rows in this particular table. Now what I will do is I will try to identify if I run that particular query select all from sales where id is equals to 1 how effectively my oracle optimizer is going to perform or what strategy it's going to opt for. So I ran this query and I'm going to see what exactly happened. So if you see oracle actually searched the entire table it did a table access full scan on my table which is very costly. So though I just wanted to identify or retrieve a single row it went ahead and access my entire table. Now imagine if I had a table with billions of rows and 200 columns in order to retrieve a single row my query may take 10 to 15 minutes and that's not acceptable. So what exactly I can do is I can go ahead and create a unique index on my id column. I know that this is populated by row number so it's a unique column. I will go ahead and uh, create the index. This is a syntax. I am creating a unique index. This is the name of the index on my sales table and the column that I am using is id. Since I am using a single column, it's a simple or single index column. Now let's understand after creating this particular column what exactly has changed. So I am going to analyze my index real quick. So in order to make my index effective or in order to tell oracle that you can use this index for query optimization I have to analyze my index and let's see if I go ahead and try to run this sta same statement what exactly will happen. So if you see earlier we were doing a full table access instead of that we are doing index unique scan and based on that particular row id we are getting the data from the table. Now let's go back to our powerpoint presentation and understand in layman language what exactly these two statement means. So guys this screen actually reflects my table and if you have seen one of my previous tutorials I have mentioned that block is the basic fundamental storage unit of oracle and inside blocks or inside these blue boxes we have these green boxes that actually reflect the rows. When I have not created the index, when I don't have that particular sorted file with the information that where exactly my data is stored, what exactly is going to happen, it will go ahead and read the entire file or entire table or all the blocks to identify where id1 is stored from the sales table. Now if I have billions of rows this actually can take a lot of time. So the alternate option of indexing that we have it actually works in this way. So here is my table and if you see this is my index which has two columns. The first column is id arranged in ascending order and corresponding to that particular id is the address which is stored in the pseudo column row id where my particular data is being stored. So this is how row id looks like. Now to run that particular query I don't have to scan the entire table all I have to do is I have to go to my index it sees that okay this is the uh, particular value 
it identifies the row id corresponding to that and now it knows that on which particular block my row is being stored it will go there and retrieve the data thus saving a lot of time here if you see first it's reading the index and it's doing a index unique scan what exactly is that we will understand later after it retrieves the data from that particular index it's doing table access by index row id so now it has the address where the row is being stored it will access the table using that particular row id while when we didn't had the index it was reading the entire table though we only wanted to access a single row which is not a good case especially when you have huge data i mentioned that index are actually physically stored on the database let's go ahead and verify if they are actually stored so if you see i ran a query on my user segments and it said that an index has been created a segment type has been allocated for this particular index this is the number of bytes it's consuming and it has 256 blocks allocated to it if you remember when i said i don't specify any keyword while creating an index it goes ahead and create b3 index by default and in a moment we will understand how actually the data is stored in a b3 index this is how my b3 index looks like and there is a popular misconception guys that b3 index is binary tree index which is not the case b3 index is called balanced tree index for a reason because in order to reach to the lowest level i have to traverse the same number of blocks now what exactly that means let's understand so if i want to retrieve the data corresponding to id is equals to one my oracle optimizer will go ahead and access this index and it will start from here it will start from this block which is also called as root block or root node then it will follow forward to lower levels it will see that it needs to go to the leftmost block this particular block which is also called as branch block and then it will go and it will see and identify that my data is being stored on the leftmost side of the lowest level so this particular area it's called the leaf blocks it actually stores the physical location where the data is being stored in my table so here i have two categories of blocks one that just have the pointer to the lowest level and we call them branch blocks so these blocks this area that you see here they are called branch blocks they actually don't have the row id they just have a pointer to the block which physically has the row id and those blocks are called as leaf blocks so these lowest level they actually have the physical address where the data is being stored and these blocks are called leaf blocks in order to reach to any of the leaf block you have to traverse the same number of blocks and that is why it's called balance tree and we will go ahead and verify that in a moment in our sql developer so i'm going to run this explain plan to see how many blocks it travels or what's the cost when i'm trying to access the row corresponding to id1 and it did a table unique scan and that's the cost associated with it now let's go ahead and see if i change it whether my cost will increase i'm claiming that it should not increase and it will stay the same so if you see it has to traverse the same number of blocks and the cost is also same it has to traverse three blocks from my index and then it will go ahead and fetch the data from my table based on the row id that it identifies in the leaf block so my b tree index is called balance tree index because in order to identify any data on the lowest level of the blocks i have to traverse the same number of blocks that's why it's called balance tree we just saw how effective index are instead of retrieving data from millions of rows we went ahead with a particular row id and retrieved the data so why don't we go ahead and create index on every column i mean i think it's a good idea well i'm wrong let's not do that and why because index can actually improve the performance of select in certain cases but when you are doing inserts updates or deletes it actually hampers your performance and increases the load time because now 
you have to add the data to your table at the same time you have to maintain your index as well if you remember i mentioned that index are by default arranged in ascending order so if you are inserting a row you have to insert that data in your index as well the same goes for updates and delete as well once you delete a row or update a row you will have to update your corresponding indexing accordingly to make sure that it still says in your ascending order the other challenge is that indexes actually are redundant information so you already have data that is stored in the database and now you are creating an additional object that has the same data it's just that that particular data is arranged in a particular order now and guys trust me if you have billions of rows and if you have created a composite index on multiple columns the index can itself grow huge in size if it's not giving you any worth there is no point creating it only if you have a use case where you are going to use your index regularly in your queries or you want retrievals very fast in certain cases then you should go ahead and create index it's not a magic wand that will improve your performance so you should go ahead and create on every column that's not the case so let's understand usable and non usable index in oracle so by default an index is usable and oracle optimizers only consider those index that are in usable shape it does not even consider any index which is not usable now let's go ahead and try to make this particular index non usable or unusable and we will see what exactly changes so right now if i run my explain plan i see for a particular id it's doing a index unique scan and then based on that particular row id which is being retrieved it's doing a table access by index row id now when i make this particular index unusable if i run the same query i am saying that it will not pick the index and it will go ahead and do a complete scan full table scan so if you see it started doing table access full so if your index is unusable in that case oracle optimizer won't even consider it in fact the memory that was allocated to this particular index will be dropped so if you see earlier i had this particular object created in my memory as soon as i made this particular index unusable the object itself was being dropped from memory now why would we want an index to be unusable so if i have a batch process where i actually load a lot of data during the night time and not many people are querying my database at that particular point of time i can go ahead and make my index unusable load the data as a part of my batch process will be which will be relatively faster because my oracle optimizer doesn't have to care about maintaining this particular index and once that particular load process has completed i can go ahead and rebuild my index but once my rebuild process is complete will my oracle optimizer pick my index again let's see that so i just rebuilt the index and guys this looks very fast right now because i have a small table with less number of columns in very large database where you have millions of rows and hundreds of column in that case this index rebuild can take a lot of time so let's see if after rebuilding this particular index i am going to see this object so if you see the object has been created and let's see if i run the same query this index will be picked by my optimizer or not i am saying that now since i have successfully rebuilt my index it will be picked so if you see it has my query has again started using this index and will perform faster just to quickly rephrase what exactly is unusable index when you are going ahead and deleting the entire data for index from your memory when exactly is this effective this is effective if you are loading a lot of data as a part of batch process where you are expecting a lot of changes to your uh, table in that case it makes sense to drop the index so that your oracle optimizer doesn't have to maintain or doesn't have to worry about maintaining the index once your load is done you can go ahead and recreate your index now let's understand what are visible and invisible index 
so as of now my oracle optimizer for this particular query is using the index unique scan as soon as i make my index invisible let's see if it will actually drop the index or it will keep it so it kept the index let's see even when i made this particular index invisible the oracle optimizer will use it or not the oracle optimizer is not using this index even though it persists in memory and that's the main difference between unusable index and invisible index when it comes to unusable index the data of index actually gets dropped from the memory oracle optimizer does not maintain that index so when we are inserting new data or updating data in my table the index will not be updated or inserted with new values that is not the case with invisible index in case of invisible index the oracle optimizer will continue to maintain that particular index it's just that during the query execution it will not use that particular index now the question is why would we want to maintain an index that we are not using and the answer is when i am doing an index cleanup i want to make sure that i am dropping an index which actually was not helping my query rather adversely impacting my load process if i see that my query execution or my data retrieval has slowed down considerably that means this index was actually working effectively and i will make it visible again so that oracle optimizer will start seeing it and applying it in my query now my claim is as soon as i make it visible it will be picked again by my oracle optimizer for this particular query so now if you see the index has been picked again and the data is being picked according to my index so just to quickly rephrase in invisible index oracle actually maintains and updates the index as the data is being inserted to my table it's just that it does not use that particular index while making the query plan that was not the case with unusable index in unusable index the data pertaining to that particular index was actually dropped the segment was dropped and oracle was not maintaining that index when it was inserting or updating new rows in the table let's understand what we just discussed quickly through our powerpoint presentation so when we talked about unusable index as soon as we made it unusable the actual index segment was dropped and when we ran the query oracle was actually accessing or doing full table scan in order to retrieve even a single row if required we can go ahead and rebuild the index using this particular syntax in case of invisible index we said that index will be maintained but will not be used and if you want to drop an index we will make it invisible to ensure that we don't have any performance impacts on our data retrieval how exactly this looks so if you see we are still maintaining the index and if there is any insertion in the table we will go ahead and update my index accordingly it's just that this particular index is not used right now when we are fetching the data from the table so it will still go ahead and do full table scan but if i decide that this index was actually helping in case of my data retrieval i will go ahead and make it visible and as soon as i do that my oracle optimizer will start using this index again just to quickly recap guys what we discussed index are database objects that are created on tables or table cluster which can actually improve the performance but in certain cases then we talked about our bookshelf example where we had to search a particular file in a huge shelf and if we didn't had an index we had to go through the entire shelf and that would be tricky if we had a lot of files then we understood index through an example of the sales table that if we don't create the index what exactly will happen it will do a full table scan which will be expensive then we explained how index can actually help we talked about usable and non usable index if you actually make your index unusable oracle optimizer will drop that from its memory and it will not use that index while in case of non visible index 
the index will still be maintained by oracle it's just that the optimizer will not use that index guys we are just getting started there is a lot more to come if you still have any issues understanding what we discussed don't worry about it we are going to repeat these terms again and again and guys i will recommend if you have not watched my oracle partitioning series i will recommend that at least complete the initial two videos there i have actually explained in a very simple manner how oracle stores data on disk when it comes to table and indexes that will actually build your basic concept regarding the data storage which will come in handy when we talk further about indexing thanks a lot guys for your time today i will see you in the next tutorial and if you have not subscribed to my channel please do it now